Apple has just released the newly updated 2018 MacBook Pros, and the new 13-inch Touch Bar model got some pretty substantial improvements, all for the same exact price. The Dell XPS 13, on the other hand, is our all-time favorite Windows laptop, so let's compare the two to help you decide which one is right for you. We previously compared the 13-inch base MacBook Pro to a comparable Dell XPS 13, and since Apple's base 13-inch is completely unchanged from last year, that video is still completely relevant. So if you're in the $1,300 price range, click the card above to watch that comparison. Now the 13-inch MacBook Pro for $1,799 has seen some massive updates, so we'll be comparing it to the $1,799 version of Dell's XPS 13. However, I do want to mention that Dell is constantly having sales on their laptops, so you can probably find it on BH for cheaper by using the link in the video description. The main differences between both laptops is that the Dell's comes with double the SSD storage and a 4K display instead of a 2.5K display on the MacBook Pro. The XPS is also smaller and lighter than the MacBook, even though it has the same 13-inch screen, thanks to the Infinity Edge design. However, it does have some limitations that we'll cover in just a bit. Most would agree that the XPS's design isn't as nice as the MacBook's beautiful aluminum build, but it still looks and feels great. The MacBook Pro has a larger 58 watt hour battery compared to 52 on the Dell. It also includes a higher wattage USB-C charger. Either way, battery life is great on both laptops. The MacBook Pro has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, meaning you can connect more demanding devices like eGPUs or 5K displays. The Dell does however include a USB-A adapter in the box. Both machines start with 8GB of RAM, but the MacBook's RAM is clocked slightly faster. The new Touch Bar 13-inch MacBook Pro now has Intel's 8th Gen i5 quad-core processor that's quite comparable to the XPS's quad-core i7. The Mac's base clock speed is quite a bit higher, but the XPS boosts to a slightly higher 4GHz, so let's do some benchmarks. Starting with Geekbench 4 CPU tests, both laptops got almost literally the same single-core score. However, the MacBook Pro now completely destroys the XPS in multi-core. Testing graphics performance, the MacBook Pro again destroys the XPS with a score of 32,831 compared to 22,008 on the XPS. The MacBook Pro is the obvious choice for performance. For everything from light gaming to video editing, it just comes out on top. Now, we've just got to compare the rest of the features to see if the MacBook Pro is worth spending an extra couple hundred bucks compared to the savings you can get on the Dell XPS if you shop at B&H. First of all, Apple has updated the keyboard to include a silicone barrier under each key, protecting the key switches from dust, so the old keyboard issues should now hopefully be a thing of the past. The XPS keys are fairly quiet, with good travel and a quality feel, resulting in a keyboard that we think most people would prefer over Apple's minimal travel butterfly keys. The trackpad is likely one of the best for Windows laptops, but it's a huge step behind Apple's Force Touch trackpad. That's about twice as large and has perfect feel no matter where you press. It could be adjusted to user's preference, and honestly, nothing else compares. In our previous comparison, the 13-inch base MacBook Pro speakers blew the XPS out of the water. The 2018 MacBook Pro speakers have been updated, and we noticed great improvements in bass and mids. The volume on the XPS is good enough for most situations, but the sound quality is subpar, and the speakers fire to the sides. The MacBook speakers face the user and are louder with much more bass, clean mids, and crisper highs. The Touch Bar MacBook Pro obviously comes with a touch bar, and we honestly think it's a gimmick, apart from the fingerprint scanner, which also comes on the XPS. However, the Touch Bar model also comes with Apple's T2 chip, which takes care of a bunch of system controllers so the CPU doesn't have to, including automatic SSD encryption, which doesn't slow down the SSD either, which used to be a drawback of encrypting your storage. The T2 chip also enables Siri on the MacBook, and with macOS Mojave coming soon, you'll be able to use it to control your HomeKit devices. The Dell's almost bezel-less design is striking, but it also forces the webcam down next to the hinge. This makes for a very unflattering perspective that could be a deal breaker for those who use the webcam often. The Mac not only looks better in terms of viewing angle, but also video and sound quality. Both of these machines fall under the 13-inch category, but the MacBook screen is slightly larger and also uses a 16 by 10 configuration, resulting in an extra vertical space which makes small screens much more usable. The XPS features a beautiful 4K display, which is higher resolution than the MacBook Pro's 2.5K display. The Dell's display is rated at 400 nits of brightness, but many reviewers rated it at about 350 nits. The MacBook Pro comes out at an accurate 500 nits of brightness, so it'll be much better for outside use. 
The 2018 MacBook Pro now comes with True Tone, a feature that automatically adjusts the screen's color temperature to match the ambient light in your room. So it will look more natural, but for anybody doing professional work like video editing or photo editing, you might want to shut it off. Although the 4K display on the XPS is nice, it's ultimately going to affect battery life, and for a screen so small, 4K isn't as noticeable as it would be on a larger screen. One of our favorite features on the XPS is Windows Hello Sign-In. It uses text similar to Face ID and works incredibly well. Unfortunately, Apple's new MacBook Pro didn't get Face ID like we hoped it would, so the XPS wins there. Dell has done a great job creating and updating the 13-inch XPS. Not only is it thinner, lighter, and smaller than Apple's latest 13-inch MacBook Pro, but it's got a better keyboard, higher resolution display, and better sign-on tech. However, the 2018 MacBook Pro is much more powerful with a better trackpad, much better speakers, better camera, the dedicated T2 chip, and all of its added features, and overall better design. On top of that, Apple has fixed the biggest issue surrounding the MacBook Pro, the flawed butterfly keyboard. The choice you make will ultimately come down to what features you care about most. Although the operating system comes down to personal preference, almost everyone can admit that Windows 10 experiences a lot more issues and glitches compared to Mac OS, and to me, that's the most important feature of all. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.